Soybeans arose in East Asia like Japan and China and Korea and as a wild crop and then you know the first farmers really were just the domesticators that selected things that might be good to eat right and um, and so a lot of our diversity from soybean comes from East Asia mm. which tends to be in latitudes that are like ours. My name is Kristen Ballou. I'm a research molecular biologist with the USDA ARS in the Plant Genetics Research Unit in Columbia, Missouri. I work on the University of Missouri campus, also at the University of Missouri Research Farms, and I do soybean research to make soybean better for farmers and ultimately consumers. So is there another big challenge out there that, that, we're, that we're looking at now? Every time we add a characteristic or a trait it complicates the efficiency of putting into the high yield varieties. So we have to do the research to see, can we add this new component and still get the characteristics that we want? And so far, everything that I put together works out well. Wonderful. They don't uh, negatively interact. And then we have to do the challenge of breeding, which as I said, is a longer process. Mm -hmm. And so I've enjoyed working with the breeders to try to figure out how to make that more efficient to see can we get the high yields that we need for competitive varieties along with these characteristics and that's been a wonderful journey. And what you'll find out often is that you're working on one thing you'll discover something else. That's right uh, as I said with the dairy cow uh, situation but also um, soybeans have been used traditionally in East Asia just directly for foods and we're finding that if you use a high oleic soybean to make tofu or other soy products, traditional soy products, it changes just a little bit the characteristics of those products and I think it makes them more attractive to the uh, consumers outside of East Asia. Like it, I kind of think of it, it sort of Americanizes soybeans so that maybe it tends to agree with our palates a little bit more and that's one of my challenges is to try to find like a sort of a, a neutral flavored soybean that mm -hmm. we don't get that sort of beanie flavor mm -hmm. that most Americans aren't familiar with right. um, unless they happen to eat tofu their whole lives, which some have. Um, so that's also one of the things that I'm trying to do is, is change those characteristics so that they can um, suit our needs more readily. Oh wow. So I never thought about that. The flavor is, is, is a big thing. Flavor is. And like I said, Americanized versions, we, we have a different taste than our Asian friends do. That's right. So that's, that's fantastic. And what, you mentioned the word GMO, this is non-GMO. That's right, our research has been non-GMO. There are GMO versions of the trait and they have their own path, um, but ours happens to be non-GMO, so it can stay that way or it can um, bring on the new herbicide traits. You mm. know, if, if farmers need in their system, uh, technology to, to make a good profit, mm -hmm. then we're working also on creating um, the herbicide traits mm -hmm. that farmers might want, but we can keep it non-GMO also for some of those markets. So then those could go to our friends in Asia or Africa that, that are needing a higher, a higher protein crop. That's right. It could be, um, especially if it met the flavor characteristics, mm -hmm. uh, I think it would be an attractive crop for um, subsistence farmers that could sell it for at a market price but could save some back and use it either um, in the traditional ways or maybe some non-traditional ways. Um, yeah, it's a great, soybean is a miracle really. Yeah. <laughs> Can I ask you about USAID? Because you did a lot of work with that. That's right, you? we did work with USAID. Yeah. And uh, that project is, we call it the Soybean Innovation Lab. It's uh -huh. an innovation lab funded by USAID at the University of Illinois as the lead. And then here at the University of Missouri, uh, we had a social scientist and then Carrie Clark and uh -huh. at the university and me with USDA, we worked on somewhat the more practical aspects uh -huh. of it and we learned a lot. Uh, we were looking into soy as this um, driver for household food security uh -huh. because it could be utilized for uh, food directly or as a market crop and so we went in with the social scientist and did some research. We also looked at what technology was lacking mm -hmm. in order to be successful soybean producers um, and so Carrie really led the effort to implement a uh, local thresher design and, and uh, service program and she's really been all over Africa trying to get local blacksmiths trained to produce threshers that will work and they're multi-crop threshers but they will work for soybean Great. Um, and then to 
to give the local folks some understanding of what it means to be a service provider. There's already some existence of um, sort of like tractor service providers, mm -hmm. and so they were the natural uh, sure. leaders for providing a, a threshing uh, service provider. So we. She's done uh, business training, thresher training, uh, demonstrations, um, different kinds of ways to have sort of an agriculture economy that exists beyond subsistence uh, so right. that you can reap the benefits of, of technology and knowledge. And uh, the Soybean Innovation Lab really propelled those efforts and I think it continues now. Because a protein source is so important to our diet. That's right. I think in Africa now we're seeing sometimes the calorie needs are met outside of extreme uh, mm -hmm. acute conditions, floods or droughts or insects. But even if your caloric needs are met, we're still seeing stunting and that's just devastating to go mm -hmm. to a location and see children that you expect to be a certain age based on, on their size and your experience and, and that's all wrong because they are so stunted. From lack of protein. That's right. Wow. And other nutrients. Mm -hmm. So they may have enough calories to survive but they need that protein to grow and for their, their brains to fully mm -hmm. develop and so that they can contribute to their society and so I'm hopeful that protein from soybean will have a role there and we do research to 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 see that through so that's, that's ongoing it's fantastic